pepper. Skull pepper. There it is. Montgomery J. Claxton's residence, Colonel Claxton speaking. Telegram for Susan Culpepper. Oh, yeah, she's here, too. Okay, bring it up, please. Thank you, son. That's for my sister-in-law. You're welcome, Colonel. Now, wait a minute. Uh, here's a little something for your trouble. A dollar. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Montgomery, who's at the door? There's a telegram. Uh, for Sister Sue. Who's it from, Sister Sue? Why, it's from Nephew Newton. He says he has wonderful accommodations in California. San Quentin or Alcatraz? <laughs> Don't you go disparaging my family, Montgomery. What does dear Newton have to say, Sister dear? Montgomery? Newton wants you to ship his car to him in California. What car? You know very well what car. The car you agreed six months ago to store for him in the shed behind your real estate office. The one you said you'd jack up and never use. Oh, yes, that car. That's the one he wants me to send him. <laughs> you march right down to the freight office and make arrangements to ship it to California. Do you hear me, Montgomery? Wait a minute, Montgomery. Has anything happened to that car? Now, what in the world would make you even suspicious that something's happened to that car? Because you are a low-down, sneaky, double-crossing chiseler. <laughs> well, as long as you are not basing your statement on idle rumor, I won't take that as an insult. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't seem possible that in six months I could have put 20,000 miles on this car. No one will know the difference when I get this speedometer set back. <laughs> How's that, Colonel? Uh, move it up a little bit. That's it, that's it. Now we can take the car to the garage and get that free 1,000-mile checkup. <laughs> Come on out, Calvin. You know, Colonel, I think you ought to get those tires retreaded. They're completely bald. <laughs> and this one's got a bunion. They're not too bad. Let me pop that bulge back in there. I think we better take this down and get some retreads on the retreads before we ship it to Newton in California. I wouldn't want him to get suspicious that we've been driving it. We're suffering a little more than usual today. It's not making contact. Treading shop, Colonel. Oh, uh, over in the next block. I'll turn left at the corner here. No, no, Calvin. Don't you remember, since we threw the front end out of a line much, you can't make a left turn. We can only turn right. Oh, yeah, that's right. We'll have to take the long way around. <laughs> nice going, Calvin. I say, Cal, I hate to mention it, but, uh, there's a lot of traffic up ahead at that red stoplight. These brakes aren't holding like they used to. They must be taking hold. I can smell them burning. <laughs> if that cement truck hadn't been here, we might have gone right through the red light and got a ticket. <laughs> Never mind that, you dummy. Let's get out of here before we get hardened of the arteries from the outside. <laughs> and then I said to the truck driver, just watch it, buster. 
You happen to be talking to Calvin Burnside of the Fighting Burnside. Oh, my Calvin. Is that what he hit you in the eye? No, he didn't do that till I called him a stupid, ignorant meathead. <laughs> Why, that's just terrible. Oh, I didn't let him get away with it. I called a policeman and had him order the man to get his fist out of my eyeball. Oh, you're so brave. Give me your other hand, Calvi. What's the colonel going to do? Well, Nephew Newton had the car insured. The colonel and I are going down to the insurance company this afternoon, collect the money, buy another car, and ship it out to Newton. You certainly are smart, Calvi. Oh, yeah. Why, my IQ must be way up in the 60s or 70s. <laughs> you know something, Gloria? Holding hands with you is really dynamite. Oh, Calvin. Yeah. All of a sudden, I'm getting hot flashes in my head. Calvin, it's your cigar. Ow! I should have known, because I never had love singe my sideburns before. <laughs> <laughs> How come you're all broken up, Colonel? <laughs> I looked up Nephew Newton's insurance policy on his automobile. He kept the fire and theft, but he canceled the collision. Hmm. It's too bad we didn't hit a gasoline truck instead. Then the survivors could have collected on the fire insurance. <laughs> what are we going to do, Colonel? Well, I'll just have to go home and tell Maggie Bell and the sisters the truth. After all, accidents can happen and... <laughs> Montgomery J. Claxon, real estate speaking. <laughs> Montgomery, have you shipped Nephew Newton's car off to California yet? Well, I want to tell you something about that car, Maggie Bell, honey. There's nothing I want to hear from you except that it's on a box car anywhere. <laughs> well, I... I... <laughs> I was just going to say that your nephew's car is on the freight train now singing California, Here I Come. Well, it better be. That's all I have to say. Look at that. It happens every time she talks to me. That thing will beat like that till sundown. What are you going to do, Colonel? I don't know, Calvin, but I got to do something. If I had to sit there in that car and let that cement harden on me, I wouldn't be in a tighter spot than I am now. <laughs> Judge, that's the whole story. Newton's car is wrecked. There's no insurance, and I'm supposed to ship it to him in California. What do you think of this? Well, Colonel, it sounds to me like you've committed another case of self-inflicted barbecue. Self-inflicted barbecue? You've cooked your own goose. <laughs> I know that, Judge, but is there any way I can extricate myself from this mess? Suppose you were to take out a collision policy now and rearrange the date of the accident. I think I see what you mean. Take out a policy and then report the accident like it just happened. Yeah, I got it, but, uh, Judge, uh... Are you sure this isn't a shade on the dishonor side? Oh, no. You'll be doing just what they do with the delayed fight broadcast on television. You're simply bringing them the accident at a more convenient time. <laughs> That's a brilliant idea, Judge, and I thank you from the bottom of my loyal southern heart. <laughs> uh, before you go, Colonel, would you mind telling me that story in reverse? and threading me back to sea level. <laughs> well, Calvin, this is the insurance company. Now let's go in and take out the policy on Newton's car. I'm right behind you, Colonel. Aha, uh -huh. did you? <laughs> Did you see the fellow that hit me? Stop it, you big dummy. We've got important business with this company, and we've got to keep our minds on our toes. How do you do? May I help you? I'd like to get a collision policy on a 1956 coupe. Yeah, a gray one. 
Well, we have several excellent policies. Uh, here's one that covers collision, upset, contact with a moving vehicle or stationary object. And this, uh, damage resulting from... Will it cover us if we should hit a cement truck waiting for a red light? Of course. <laughs> and it also covers all risks involving... Uh, we'll take it. Uh, where do I sign? <laughs> But don't you want to read it? No, thanks. As long as it has a cement truck clause in there, just give me a pen and I'll put the fair and honorable name of Claxon on the document. <laughs> Very well. Here you are. If you'll put down your address, we'll send you the policy and bill you for the premium. Here you are, sir. Pleasure to do business with you, sir. Well, I, I don't believe we've ever sold a policy this quickly before. We Southerners talk slow and act fast. Uh, tell me something, sir. Uh, when does this policy go into effect? Why, it's in effect now. Now? By now, you mean now now, don't you? You don't mean mountain time now or Pacific time now or anything like that. You mean right now, this very moment now, uh, on the nose now. Yes, yes, I do. Uh, what's this all about? Oh, uh, nothing, sir, nothing. Uh, we just want to get all the facts in case we have to sue later. <laughs> well, thank you, mister. We'll be seeing you again sometime. Good day, sir. Now what do we do, Colonel? We'll just dilly-dally for a few seconds. We don't want to be too obvious. <laughs> yes? Uh, can I help you? I'd like to report an accident. <laughs> just a minute. You're the two men who were just in here and took out this policy. That's right, sir. While we were in here signing up for it, the car was completely demolished out front. Yes, sir, that's right. According to the eyewitnesses, it must have happened while the ink was drying on the signature. You say this accident happened in front of the building just now? Sir, you can go look for yourself. It's the car with the back seat full of cement. I see. Well, this is most unusual. If you'll just sit down there for a moment, I, I think I'll have one of our attorneys speak to you. Oh, uh, thank you, sir. You see, Calvin, we're getting action here. Getting a lawyer to speed up paying us our claim. Yeah, this is the kind of company to do business with, all right. You know, that's a mighty fine policy we bought. Yes, sir. Look at all that official curlicues and that big seal. Makes you have a lot of confidence in the company. And look at all the big printing there. What does it say? Well, it says here, the company assumes all liability. Claims paid, cash or certified check. You know, this is really a free and easy company, isn't it? I'll say. What does all that small print say? I always carry this jeweler's glass for scrutinizing insurance policies and installment contracts. <laughs> now, let's see. Here with penalties for defrauding. $5,000 fine, six years in the penitentiary. <laughs> hey, this is great. If this company tries to defraud us, we can throw them in jail for six years. <laughs> we can throw them? Well, let's see. In case of misrepresentation or fraud, the insurer can take criminal action against the insurer. Mm -hmm. What's the matter? We are the insurer. What about it? Well, if we are the insurer, we are going to end up sitting in the jail. <laughs> Calvin. Now that's funny. They were here a minute ago. Perhaps they stepped out into the hall. And I guess that's their car in front. But I don't see them. <laughs> well. This company's got offices all over the city. You dummy, we panicked ourselves right back to the same door. Uh, how did do? do, do, do. Thank <laughs> you.
Calling those happy days at the Mardi Gras. Remember the hoop skirt and the laughter and the gentleman calling and the magnolia? I think of those days once in a while. Then Montgomery walks in the door and I want to lie down and die. <laughs> what bothers me is what that puffed up old foof done with my nephew's car. Don't you think it's safe to trust him, Sister Sue? The only time I'll trust that man is when he has gone down the lonesome road in that velvet lined phone booth. <laughs> What plan have you got to get out of this mess you are in? Calvin, we're going to buy a second-hand car, the exact model and color that Newton had. Oh, I see. Then you ship it off to him, and Maggie Bell and Sister Sue won't ever be the wife. That's my plan. Look at all these cars. <laughs> yeah, here's the same make and model and paint job as Newton. Look at that. I don't see a price on it, but... It says, no offer or refuse. Well, let's find generous Jerry and talk to him. Hmm. Nobody here, Calvin. Oh, excuse me. Uh, we didn't see you crouch behind the door there. Uh, can I help you, friends? Are you the trading fool? Yes, sir, that's me, generous Jerry. <laughs> generous to a fault. <laughs> well, sir, we like that gray coupe out there with the blue upholstery. Yeah, the one that says no offer refused. Uh, how much is that car? Ah, we don't set prices around here. You're dealing with a trading fool. The customer makes his own deal. <laughs> well, what would you say to $500? Five hundred? I, I paid eight hundred for it. <laughs> no, I have no willpower. All right, you got yourself a deal. <laughs> How about the monthly payments? Anything you say, friend. You're the boss. I'm just here to, to, to make you happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could afford uh, $25 a month. Fine with me. Now, how long do you want to pay it off? Colonel, I think you ought to take at least 24 months. Don't be silly, friend. Why rush yourself? Instead of 24 months, why don't you spread it out? I'll spread it out? Sure, make it easy on yourself. Pay me $25 a month for 36 months. <laughs> now, how's that, friend? That sounds wonderful, Colonel. Now, sir, I suppose you want to know something about my credit rating? Uh, not at all. Your face is your credit. <laughs> now, here are the keys. Just drive it home, friend. Well, sir, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to do business with a nice... Wow. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Generous Jerry, but would you mind unlocking the door here? Oh, I'd be happy to, but uh, before I unlock it, I, I wonder if I could have your name. Just a, just a formality, you know. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Glad to give you my name. It's, uh... Fine. <laughs> Just sign it on the bottom of this little <laughs> three-page contract here. Uh, right here. That's it, friend. There you are, Mr. Trading Fool. And now, sir, if you would be so kind as to unlock the door, we shall be on our way. Uh, first, there's uh, just one or two other little formalities to take <laughs> care of. Ah, uh, there are. While we're in the signing mood, would you mind putting your name on a few of these papers here? <laughs> I suppose I could. Uh, That's fine. Now, a, a chattel mortgage on your furniture. Uh, a lien on your life insurance. An attachment on your bank account. Uh, a garnishee on uh, all future salary. And uh, in case of uh, legal action, this waiver of all rights as an American citizen. <laughs> Is that all? Uh, that's it, friends. Now, drop by and see us any time. Uh, preferably not later than the sixth of the month. <laughs> Oh, you doll! <laughs> You've done it again! <laughs> now, to get rid of 
the evidence. <laughs> Holy cow, Colonel, we forgot the tow rope. the freight office and ship it off to California. Nobody will know the difference. <laughs> two were talking nice to me. <laughs> we were, Montgomery, honey. Why, sure. We checked up on you, Montgomery. We called the freight office, and they said you really had shipped Newton's car. It was perfect how you handled everything. And to think we were suspicious of you. We just hate ourselves. We're trying to make up for it by bringing you your favorite breakfast. Ham hock smothered in bacon dripping. <laughs> Can you find it in your heart to forgive us? Well, being a sweet, generous Southern gentleman, I think I could. <laughs> if you bring me a nice stack of Tennessee buckwheat cakes with some honey molasses. We'll fix them straight away. I know I didn't earn all this love and affection, but... I'm a married man, so I'm going to take what little I can get. Thank <laughs> you. 